In this war between Israel and Palestine, between Israel and Hamas, there are many countries whose peace is at stake, Lebanon being one. I'm being joined in his first interview, the ambassador of Lebanon to India, Dr. Rabia Narsh. Many thanks for joining us here on India Today, sir. Let's begin with the Israel-Hamas war that now is ongoing. What has Lebanon's reaction been to this entire conflict itself? Thank you, Gita. You're welcome to my office, and thank you for having me on your show. Uh, first of all, let's, let's uh, correct something and put things set to set things right. It's not a war between Israel and Palestine or Israel and Hamas. It's a war of Israel on the Palestinian, and this war has been going on for decades, so for more than 75 years, and uh, particularly for 56 years since the 1976 uh, war that Israel occupied the Palestinian land and refused to give them or to abide by the international community a resolution and the United Nations resolution to establish a Palestinian state. So this war is a war of Israel uh, on the Palestinian. There's no symmetry here. There are no two states warring, uh, at war. Uh, there are oppressed people and the oppressor, occupier and the occupied. There's an apartheid regime who is killing and, uh, and uh, inflicting devastating um, repercussions, devastating impacts on the uh, Palestinians. This is the situation. Uh, coming back to your question, uh, Lebanon, uh, of course, is at stake. I mean, we, we, have, we are concerned. Uh, we have worries. The situation in Lebanon is tense because we have experienced Israel uh, aggression, and we know that Israel is a real threat. Um, they, they, they did uh, destroy, I mean, they did uh, attack Lebanon many times and uh, inflicted lots of damages and civilian um, innocent souls. So, uh, yes, the situation is volatile and uh, we, uh, we are worried of the escalation of the situation and we call for de-escalation and we call for peaceful solution. Well, we will talk about uh, the stakes for Lebanon, but uh, beginning with October 7th, do you think, Ambassador, that October 7th changed how uh, the entire situation in West Asia and Middle East is being viewed, uh, the, the conflict between Israel and Palestine is being viewed, that uh, the Hamas attacked well, well within Israeli territory, but more than that, it's the hostage crisis that certainly has become a concern civilians being attacked. Has, has October 7th changed how the world is viewing the Palestine question? You're right, it's a good question. Uh, the, like I said, the situation did not start on October the 7th. The, the situation started since the occupation of Israel to the Palestinian land. And what Hamas did or any Palestinian group against the occupier is, is respected by international law. Wherever there's occupation, there's a resistance and international law guarantee for, for occupied people to fight for their freedom, to fight for their land, to fight for their, for their country. Uh, I mean, given the fact that Israel denied all, every single right, the basic right, the human rights of the Palestinians for, for decades, then what, what the world can expect other than uh, fr frustration and other than rebel against the occupier to get their land? For 75 years, and uh, they, they've been calling for, for the peaceful solution for, for a, a state of their own. And, uh, you know, Gita, you are, um, I mean, a good follower of the, the situation in the Middle East. Uh, since, uh, since 2002, uh, all the Arab nations, they met in Beirut and they uh, issued something called the, Palest the, uh, the Beirut a Peaceful Initiative. They all uh, put the historic uh, initiative uh, where they were ready, all the Arab world, all 22 Arab states, they were ready to recognize Israel only in return of a state of Palestinian and the right of return to the Palestinians to their land. And Israel have been uh, refusing this uh, solution uh, up to now. Every year this solution is renewed and put on the table and every year Israel uh, refused, refused to, to abide by. And this is not, not only an Arab call, it's, uh, the whole world is with two-state solution. As you know, India is a staunch uh, supporter for, for such a resolution because it's the only, the only way possible to, to get out of this crisis. 
uh, a two-state solution that guarantees a, a, a peaceful a sovereign state lives side by side with Israel in peace. But the only country in the whole world that refuses this uh, solution is Israel. So th that's how we, we see Israel as the only, uh, the only hurdle against any peaceful solution. But in terms of condemnation, when civilians are attacked, will there be any condemnation coming from you or your country on civilians, be it the Israelis or Palestinians? And we'll come to Palestine. We'll speak about Gaza in detail. But will there be a condemnation for civilians having been attacked and children having been taken hostage? Look, yeah, without putting the introduction that I always say in this, uh, in this uh, sense that uh, uh, there's the, the Western media, and unfortunately, some Indian media also uses this frame set directly ask the guests to condemn what happened on October 7th. Okay, of course, I mean civilian casualties are uh, must be condemned. We we are not uh, we are not with or we don't support any uh, killing to any innocent soul. Uh, but the the question is not here. The question is what caused what caused this uh, situation, what caused the civilian casualties, is, uh, is a, a more uh, gr a graver and more uh, heinous attack on civilian, uh, again on civilians, but this time from the other side, from the Palestinian. So we want to condemn, if we want me to condemn what happened on October 7th, I will also have to go back to the root cause of this situation and condemn Israel for its attacking on the Palestinian every day. They, are, they humiliate the Palestinian, they treat them like animals, and I think you have heard the defense minister of, of Israel, they said we are at war with animals. I mean, this dehumanization of people is, is unacceptable. This one should be condemned, this is condemnable. Um, I mean, c killing civilians is condemned, but also treating civilians like, like animals, as they said, and carpet bombing them, leveling their places to the ground, uprooting their trees, humiliating them every day on the, on the check, bo check uh, border or, or the, on, uh, on the border um, checkpoints. This is, I mean, uh, what, what do you expect from the, the, the people who, are, who is oppressed on a daily basis uh, to, to, to react. We condemn, we condemn bombing hospitals, we condemn bombing uh, churches and mosques and, and civilian infrastructures. Just this we all condemn. And it's easy to condemn because this is inhuman. Dr. Narsh, then talking about Gaza. Um, this is a massive humanitarian crisis that we're talking about. Gaza has been bombarded on a daily basis and we're seeing civilian casualty that has never been witnessed before. In terms of a humanitarian pause to allow aid into Gaza, we've seen an international call for it, uh, but that has not really translated into action. How does Lebanon look at this humanitarian crisis? It's heartbreaking. It's, it's something that uh, really, um, I mean, it, it's unbearable when you see images coming from Gaza, when people and children are, are lying on the ground. They don't have uh, beds, they don't have hospitals to go to. Uh, nothing, I mean, the, the medics and the medicines are, are unavailable. They cut off water and electricity and, and food. The, the, the Gaza Strip, the whole Gaza Strip is sealed off from the, the world. And this is not, not recent, by the way. For 16 years, the Gaza Strip has been uh, cut off from the entire world. And nothing comes into Gaza Strip but with the permission of the Israelis. Uh, if Israel is an occupied uh, force, then they have the, the, they have the responsibility to safeguard the uh, people who are under their occupation which they don't. Uh, of course, Lebanon, like, like I said, uh, condemned such acts and called for the international community to uh, lift the siege on Gaza and help the Palestinian people there, and on the West Bank as well, because the, in the West Bank there is no Hamas, but the atrocities are the same, because the Israeli occupation is there. I'm going to make a distinction. I'm going to make a distinction between the Lebanon, Lebanon government and Hezbollah that is based uh, out of Lebanon because the threats should Israel enter Gaza are serious. Hezbollah has threatened to join the war uh, and should that happen, Lebanon could suffer greatly. So 
talking about Lebanon as the government and where does it stand when it comes to Hezbollah and Hezbollah's operations where they support the Hamas against Israel. Look, there's no official statement from Hezbollah that there, there were talks that if, uh, if the uh, ground invasion uh, happens then from Israel to Gaza Strip, then Hezbollah will uh, interfere and uh, involved in this war. But there's no official uh, statement, especially that the leader of Hezbollah hasn't uh, given any statement so far on, on this ongoing war. Uh, so this is this is not I mean this is off the table because this is not a, a possibility right now. Um, the distinction between Hezbollah and the Lebanese uh, the Lebanese government is not also very clear. I mean, of course, uh, Hezbollah as a resistance group is separate because no no resistance group act within the the official channels in, in any state. It's resistant group. They are popular group and they fought the occupier. But at the same time, Hezbollah is a political party. They are represented in the government, they are represented in the parliament, and they, there's the, the coordination is always there. So uh, we don't know, I mean, the, uh, the tactics of Hezbollah and uh, when or, or if they will join the war, but uh, the, the government, and uh, I speak for Lebanon, for the government of Lebanon, we don't want to get into this war. We are a peace-loving country, we want, because we experienced war, and we know what war means, we experienced Israeli aggression. Uh, that's why we are not interested at all in uh, into getting into this war. But uh, Ambassador Hezbollah Chief Nasrallah just hosted uh, the Hamas deputy chief and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad's head, Ziad ul Nakhala, in Beirut. Uh, if these meetings are taking place, what does it mean for uh, for Lebanon and Lebanon's own security? How much, uh, how much uh, of a threat could this entire scenario be for Lebanon itself? Should, even if there's no announcement, the fact that meetings have taken place, should Hezbollah as a militia group enter this entire fray? It's not a secret that the resistance groups in the region, they, they coordinate. I am not aware of this meeting and there's no, no statement uh, that uh, came out of this meeting. So, I mean, it's just a meeting, so we don't know what... what uh, what happened in the meeting, and we don't know the outcome of the meeting. Um, as as a government, like I said, like I said, we are concerned, of course. Uh, but then again, uh, Hezbollah knows that that uh, war is not a cakewalk for for all parties. I mean, even for Israel, also, uh, the devastating repercussion of war are. I mean, no one wants to go into this scenario. Uh, and let's hope that it will not happen. Right. Uh, again, just one final question before I move on to other uh, aspects. On Hezbollah itself and the Hamas, the fact that uh, th there have been meetings and uh, Lebanon it does not want to enter war, is there any communication and engagement in showing and ensuring that you do not enter the war at all? Uh, or is that, is that in the realm of possibility even today, given the fluid situation? And should there be massive aggression against Gaza, against the West Bank, then what will Lebanon do? Yes, of course, the, the talks are, are always there. Like I said, uh, Hezbollah is part of the government, maybe indirectly, but also part of the Lebanese politics as a whole. They, are, they have members in the parliament, and there are always, I mean, on a daily basis, the talks. Uh, our prime minister has announced that they, he contacted uh, Hezbollah officials and our uh, foreign minister also. So, but there's no guarantee. I mean, who can guarantee? Because the, the situation is in Israel's hands, is in the powerful party hand. So you don't ask Hezbollah uh, if we don't want war. Don't ask Hezbollah to step aside and, and stay calm. You have to ask the, the powerful party. You have to ask Israel not to escalate, not to provoke. Israel has been provoking, I think, as if they wanted this war. Um, one journalist, unfortunately, from, on the Lebanese side, Lebanese journalist has been killed by Israeli direct shots. Uh, civilians have been killed, the homes have been targeted. So, so I mean, if we don't want this war, we are doing our best, we are trying uh, w what we can do, we are doing what we can do. But the, the ball now is in Israeli court. They should restrain themselves, they should, because they have, like I said, they have weapons of mass destruction, they, they, present, uh, they present themselves as the, I don't know, fourth or fifth most powerful army in the world. They have nuclear arm, uh, uh, weapons. 
Um, we, we see the, the devastating powers on Gaza. They are trying new weapons, white phosphorus. So, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not in our hand. Plus, uh, you know, of course, Gita, you, your viewers ha have to know that um, this societal connection in the Arab world, and especially Palestine, Lebanon, Syria, all the Arab world, the, the, the familial and societal links is so strong. Uh, so, I mean, if, if something happened to Gaza, it's not like only a neighboring country. It's like attacking your, your own home or your brother's home. I gave an example earlier that uh, as if, uh, God forbidden, that something, happen, something bad happened to an Indian in southern India, on South India, then uh, an, Indian, uh, an Indian here in North India would feel sorry and would feel like he is concerned, right? So the same here. Uh, that's why n there's no guarantee, and no one can guarantee how the emotion or how the uh, th things develop. Uh, of course, now the, um, uh, every Arab, they feel like, uh, of course, angry and frustrated. And, but then again, the restraint is there, and the powerful party, like I said, Israel, should, do, uh, should take the initiative, not the poor Palestinians. But Israel is just one amongst many. In terms of the Arab world, you have very important, strong, powerful countries in the Arab world. Do you see Arab world being divided today and not speaking in unison in ensuring that there, at least if not anything else, is a humanitarian corridor, that there's ceasefire for humanitarian aid to go? Even on that, we've not seen uh, the international community find consensus. There's much talk about this issue, and you are right by this question, but I think there's some exaggeration. It's, it's normal, I mean, to have differences in politics, even in, in, within the European Union. Uh, is the European Union all one world? No, they, are, they have different opinions, and we see uh, United Kingdom uh, withdrew from, uh, from the European Union, and, and lots of, I mean, uh, I can give you many examples in the African Union, uh, the same. Uh, when it comes to the Arab world, there are differences, of course, it's politics, but when it comes to the popular sentiment, this, they're all unified. And again, when it comes to Palestine, even the political differences between the regimes are, I mean, they, they are less when it comes to Palestine particularly. So. So, yeah, I mean, th there might be some differences, but now the, the issue is beyond that. The issue is that there is a people who, who are being targeted on daily basis, who are being deprived of their basic rights, deprived of, of I mean, schooling, of food, of, of I mean, the basic rights that, that any person, that any human should enjoy, they are deprived of. So uh, the, the Arab world, like I said, they act, of course, and they, uh, they call for the intention because alone they, they, they can't do it uh, mm. by, by themselves. Uh, you said powerful, we have powerful countries. I mean, yes, we do, but I mean, again, this is international uh, responsibility because when, when Israel was created, it was not created by the Arab world. It was created at the United Nations. And by the way, it's the only nation in the world that's created by decision. Mm. Uh, by, by the Security Council. Uh, so th the same decision that partitioned Palestine they called, for, called for two states, one for the, Jewish, for the Jews and one for the Arab, Palestinian Arab. Where is the Palestinian state? Every, every country in the world, uh, they are with this two-state solution. It's, it's, I mean, it's a, a slogan, you know. Uh, two-state solution is the only peaceful solution available to solve this historic crisis. Everyone, India, you know, we are here in India, and India has been calling for ages for, a, uh, two so for the two-state solution to be implemented. Only one country in the world that refused, refuses this solution, which is Israel. I mean, because Israel is being, has been treated as above all international standards, above international law, uh, Israel has been violating like dozens of international uh, community of, of United Nations resolutions, and Israel is being treated as spoiled child. While, while I mean, uh, the, the solution is maybe not very simple, but the solution is there: create a Palestinian state. Like since I mean, 75 years, this solution has been has been there, but uh, has has not been implemented because of Israeli uh, refusal. The larger picture, there was a massive move to normalization of ties between Israel and the Arab world. 
Do you see that now come to a screeching halt or put in the back burner that it will take a long time for the Arab world to look at Israel yet again as a country that they can normalize ties with? Or should it become conditional that first resolve the Palestine question, then we should normalize relations? Um, every time uh, the, there's some uh, rapprochement between uh, Israel and any Arab country, then Israel uh, uncover its, its true face and uh, show their, uh, their brutality against the Palestinian. And like I said, the, the popular uh, sentiment in the Arab world is against Israel because of their uh, crimes. Um, so, so, and, and the regime is what? The regime represents their people. So, um, yes, I, I think we, we were, uh, I mean, with, like I said, we have uh, presented a peace initiative, historic peace initiative, but unfortunately Israel has missed this opportunity. So bilateral relations, I mean, uh, it's, it's up to each country. I can't comment on bilateral relations between Israel and any other Arab country. It's up to them. But the, the, the biggest uh, opportunity was missed by Israel, and it's still there. I mean, uh, the, the Arab, they are the peace-loving Arab countries, they, they, they still, up to now, despite the all atrocities of Israel, they still say that the Arab peace initiative is on the table, Israel has just to uh, abide by international resolutions and give Palestinian land, the Palestinians their land and their home to, to establish their state and the right of return of the Palestinians. And then we are ready to normalize relations with Israel and uh, establish normal diplomatic relations. Many have written and believe that uh, this attack was also to ensure that these normalization of ties bet between Israel and the Arab world is derailed. Would you ascribe, would you subscribe to that theory that the, one of the motives was to derail the peace process? I can't comment on intentions. I don't know. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's not, I mean, nothing visible or clear to comment on. But, uh, I mean, the, the, um, if, if the intention of Israelis are true in, in uh, uh, their rapprochement with the with the Arab world, then they have to also uh, be be uh, to give the Palestinians their rights. Uh, there's the starting point. The starting point is whatever you do uh, those bilateral uh, bilateral relations. When the main core, the root cause of the Middle East problem is not solved, then every uh, artificial or whatever every initiative will look artificial if not solve the root cause of the problem, which is the, giving Palestinian their land. Is Lebanon disappointed with the international community to not be able to? We've had United Nations resolutions being moved there uh, to ensure that there's a ceasefire or at least a cessation of violence so that humanitarian aid reaches Gaza. No consensus by the international community. Is that a disappointment? Is there is there no um, forum or body where uh, where countries can speak in one voice? It certainly doesn't look like the United Nations has the teeth. You are right. Uh, we we are uh, disappointed. I mean, we are we are frustrated and disappointed. But I mean, the, we, we are. By the way, we are uh, a founding member of the United Nations, Lebanon. Uh, we uh, we put hopes and still put hopes in the international uh, community in the, because we uh, we think that humans are one and we are one family. We should work together for peace. Uh, but yes, there is. It seems that there is double standard in in dealing with the situation in the Middle East. They treat Israel, like I said, as the the spoiled child. Uh, you know now that the word many of them, most of the world, has um, risen to, to uh, stand by Israel and condemn the attack uh, that happened on the 7th October, and many world leaders rushed to, to Israel, to Tel Aviv, to support, uh, to support Israel. Well, the situation, like I said, it goes way back before October 7th. They, they don't see the, uh, the atrocities that the Palestinians uh, are living in, uh, th this double standard has to stop, and the solution is easy, pressure Israel to abide by international law and not to act like they are above all, all international standards, and then the situation is solved. Do you see, foresee a, maybe a moderate government in the near future in Israel and not such a far-right one which uh, 
uh, which has been a problem area for Palestinians in the region? We hope. We hope. I don't know. I mean, uh, it's, it's uh, something of internal politics in, in Israel, but uh, this, this uh, government uh, is one of the most extremist and most uh, uh, violent government. Uh, we hope that uh, uh, other government will be able to establish peace. We have because we, do, we don't have partner. We don't have a peace partner in uh, in Israel. Uh, we hope that things get better and uh, peace. Uh, peace is the only solution. Right. Before I let you go, just a regional perspective. Keeping now bringing broad basing it to the Persian Gulf as well. Iran, a major stakeholder again in the region, has been supporting. Hamas and the Hezbollah, um, and Iran has also threatened that should Israelis enter Gaza, that they will be in the fray, they, they will enter the war. What do you imagine will happen should that happen if Iran enters? Would that not mean a whole lot of destruction, not just for Palestinians, but also for Iran and the bordering areas, which includes... We, we, we don't want to see the war ex extended or expanded to involve any other country, not Iran, not, not any other country, not the United States. We, we, uh, we want this war to de-escalate, not to escalate. Uh, I, I can't speak for Iran. I don't know their intentions. Uh, but then again, uh, I say that uh, the only solution is to give the Palestinians their, their land and to establish a Palestinian statehood. Uh, what Iran or Syria or any other stakeholders in the region, they have, I mean, uh, they speak for themselves. Uh, as Lebanon, we, uh, we call for a peaceful solution. The two-state solution is the only possible solution for now. And as Lebanon, you extend all the support as the government does. Does it support uh, the resistance groups, whether if it's the Hamas, PIJ or Hezbollah? We support in this extent support to these uh, uh, groups as from, or, Iran. from no no does lebanon support these resistance groups as resistance groups or uh, yes. or or militant by, by organizations by nature the resistance group they don't ask for government support they act independently they act as popular uh, groups so it's not like uh, a government support a resistance group resistance only is there when the occupation is there if there's no occupation then there is no resistance and this is our situation. I mean, Hezbollah is there only was established in 1981 or 82, early 80s, because of the Israeli invasion into Lebanon. And then resistance group were formed, and they, they organized themselves. In, and by the way, uh, Hezbollah is not the only resistance group, uh, but maybe the, now the most famous or the most powerful uh, resistance group. When, when Israel invaded Lebanon, there were lots, I mean, many uh, resistance groups who resisted Israel because they have the right to defend their uh, country and their homes. And, support, and allowing them to be or have their camps in, Hez, uh, in, in Lebanon, it's whether it's like Hezbollah or Hamas. Uh, having camps. I, I'm not aware of any Hamas camps in Lebanon. There are no Hamas camps in Lebanon. There are Palestinian refugees there, and they see their uh, brothers there uh, killed. They are frustrated. But there's no camps uh, of Hamas in Lebanon. And like I said, Hezbollah are Lebanese people. They, they, are, they live in, in Lebanon. If they are resisting, then they're right uh, to, to resist the occupation. On that note, sir, thank you so much for speaking with India today and sharing Lebanon's perspective on the war, only hoping that peace will return sooner than later and there would be lesser or I should say, no civilian casualty from here on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Gita. It's a pleasure. And uh, I join uh, you in, and join uh, your call for peace. Peace is the only solution. Uh, we hope that one day peace will prevail in our region and in the whole world. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Narj. Thank, Thank you. you.